Oh, it's a stupid time in the morning, which can only mean one thing, that I have to keep my voice down because Mary's asleep, and it's race day. Mm, but guess what? It's not me. Luckily, George is my guinea pig today. I'm not racing. George is doing the Heaver Castle Middle Distance Triathlon. It's called, is it the gauntlet? Good luck to him, it's a lovely day out there. But we have to eat breakfast first, and then we're off. Nice bit of porridge. Look at that thing. I know. Better than yeah, I Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> People are like, oh, look at him. He's got someone filming him. That is. That's the curse of someone filming is that and immediately people assume that you're an elite athlete because you're having a video made about you. The pressure <laughs> is on. Yeah. It's a good pressure though. So I've left George to go and set up over in transition. I'm not allowed in there, no spectators in transition. I, what I thought I would do this week is give you a taste, give you a feeling of what it feels like to race a middle distance triathlon. From my perspective as a spectator, but someone who's, that is, that's my main distance, but also George is from in race. So he'll be setting up at the moment over there. And I'm gonna talk through all of the things that you think about before the race, during the race, after the race, I'm going to be cold today though. It is worth pointing out that it is not even 7 o'clock yet in the morning. I'm pretty much the only person here. I have the finish line, athlete village, whatever you want to call it, all to myself, which is interesting. I'm going to take you to the, the lake in a minute. Let's give you a little background on George. We first met in Italy at Challenge Rome because we were being coached by the same person who put us in touch, so thanks Steve. We raced that day, both qualified for GB with our results and we kept in touch after that. George has since competed in all sorts for GB, including the Euros in Romania with me. He races for the army and he's working hard to see if he can make it to the pro level, but he's also a thoroughly lovely dude and one of my podcasting partners for Fitness Freaks, so go check that out as well. How are you feeling, George? Pretty good, pretty cold. They've uh, just reduced, we just found out they've reduced the swim to a thousand meters, so. Which is good news for me. <laughs> yeah, I would have been better with zero swim. So let's talk about a middle distance swim. Usually it's 1.9 kilometers, but today down to one kilometer because the water is 12 degrees. That is colder than the sea. Screw that. It's the first time I'm actually glad I'm injured. Now the swim takes on average between 30 to 40 minutes. So it accounts for very roughly 10 to 15% of your overall race time, which sucks if you're a swimmer. I tend to focus 10 to 15% of my overall training time on swimming because of this. I can improve by seconds rather than minutes, so the time benefit equation means training time is best spent elsewhere for me. By the way, George wins best swim entry of the day. Epic. Someone once said to me, you can't win a race at the start, but you can lose it. And that's how I look at the swim. I make sure that I'm warm enough so that my performance doesn't deteriorate and I just find a rhythm in the water that feels smooth and comfortable. Going too hard could blow me out on the bike or even on the run. And if I can find feet to swim behind, I do that because you can save 30% energy for the same effort and speed costs, so it's always worth doing. Obviously, that's providing they're good at swimming in a straight line. George is a much better swimmer than me, but even he'd tell you not to blow yourself out in the early stages of a race. And just like that, the swim's over and it's into transition and onto the bike. This is how we oh, do it. Oh. Yeah, no, I can imagine, but you did well, mate. Came out well. Good work, buddy. That's great stuff. Um, 
So once you're out of the water, like these heroes going past me here, it's time to get your legs, running legs, cycling legs back, warm up a little bit. These guys are going to be freezing because it's 12 degrees in there so this is all about now thinking about how am I going to stay warm on the bike. Sometimes that's not a dilemma you have to have but today that's definitely a dilemma you have to have. Everyone's wrapping up warm and I would always say you get out on the bike you would rather be a little bit too warm than too cold because too cold and performance just dips very very quickly. Man, it's the first day that I have not had FOMO from watching a race. I'm actually feeling pretty smug right now. And as you run into transition, your thoughts turn to the bike leg, the longest discipline. So much can go right or wrong as you're relying not just on the machine that is your body, but also the machine that is the bike. First dilemma on a day like this is clothing, but you've already planned your fueling strategy. You need to think about controlling your effort, be it with power, heart rate, or just feel, because there's a half marathon to come. People often say a triathlon is a bike race with a swim warm up and a run cool down and in terms of time, it's hard to argue, although go too hard and you'll look like a zombie on the run. In my opinion, the bike leg is a game of chess. Play it right, have a strategy for your effort, when to fuel and what the fuel is, when to drink and by the time the run comes around, you'll play Rooks Bishop to Night King 5. Checkmate. Oh, I don't really know chess. But neglect any of these aspects and your queen will be taken by a lowly pawn and your house of cards will come tumbling down. Gutter ball. Still don't don't really get chess. Basically I'm saying it's bad. Don't get me wrong, it always hurts, but done right and it's a tolerable, purposeful discomfort that squeezes the juice out of the bike leg but allows you to smash the run. In essence, nail the bike, nail the race. Cool. Look what yeah, I found. Taking you down now and the race uh, okay, so come to support. Come on, let's do this. Uh, so we tried to get ourselves out of the wind, sit down for a little bit and uh, watch the triathletes come past who are now on the run. We're still waiting for George. Well done. Okay. Well done guys, well done Wadey. Huh? Yeah. We're waiting for the run now and it's a little bit cold but when, when you're on the run you don't feel the cold do you? So that's, that's one bonus. George looked really strong going out onto the run, I can tell you that much. Uh, he shouldn't be too much longer before he goes through the first lap of two 10 kilometers and what I find with the run is it's often just it's getting the the fueling right and the pacing right it's it's not about going as hard as you can early because it's a half marathon but it is about making sure that you keep that energy on board and yeah don't do a Mary don't do a Mary um, we've all been there though you only learn by getting it wrong oh my goodness she's bringing a tree over she's upgraded George is coming through now. He's looking good, he's looking strong. Yes, George! You've got to be right up there. I don't know if there's no Go for it, work hard! So as an athlete, you'll come in from the bike leg and you'll have to get out on the run and sometimes your legs are gonna feel like Tin Man from The Wizard of Oz and sometimes they're gonna feel good. Feeling good is, well, good, but beware of a false sense of security because the run bites if you hit it too hard. Again, have a plan on the day and execute a pace or a heart rate or both. The rule of thumb with an Ironman is however fast you run out of transition, it's too fast and although you can push at a harder pace in a half iron, you still have to be careful. Fuel well with gels and hydrate when you can, keep ahead of it. Just keep a steady rhythm. Runs after hilly bikes hurt me more, but everyone's different. The Gauntlet is a very tough bike with over one and a half kilometers of elevation, so it's gonna sting a little. Some good mental tricks I like to employ when running is I break it into a number of park runs, in this case four, and then I break them into kilometers or mile splits. Whatever you need to do to keep it manageable, do that. And then the last five kilometers, that's the time to empty the tank. Whatever you have left, throw it at the race. You've worked hard to get here, so end yourself for the glory of the finish line. Swear you'll never do it again, and then book another one tomorrow. Marathon starts at 9.30, so we are looking at... Sub five on a hilly, hilly course in not perfect conditions is 
extremely good. So we'll see how he did in his age group as well. He's got to be right up there. Hi. Uh, you right? Yeah. It's finished. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I mean, the whole way we were getting cold, but I'd still rather have done that than what you did. <laughs> Once you've eaten the chips, I'm going to, I'm going to get you to race, race debrief which is exactly what every athlete wants just after they've ended themselves. <laughs> We've got a shiverer. It's cold. It is cold, actually. How was, uh, George, how was the race? How was the swim? Was it as cold as uh, we thought it might be? That was colder. Um, was it? Numb face, numb hands. I was so happy they cut that swim down. Yeah, man, I can't imagine if that was 1900. And in the, when you go into the stream, which would have been even colder, I'm assuming. Yeah, that would have been that, Well, that must be why they cut the, they might cut that out. And what about the bike? Hillier than you suspected? Yeah, a lot hillier. So, for anyone that's thinking about doing this, drive the course, please. <laughs> Learn the course. It is it is spiteful, to be fair. I've, in fact, I was saying to George when I did the recce of this course with a with a kind of view to doing the race, it actually put me off doing the race. And I don't want it to put you off because it's a lovely event, but I like flat races. I'll be honest. And what about the run? How did you feel the run? Uh, that was good. I mean, sort of started off well. A few knee issues which slowed me down, but the the run was beautiful. You know, through the woods, lots of twists and turns, ups and downs, to keep it interesting. But well, you looked strong. I know you had a, you know a bit of knee pain, but you did look strong. I just couldn't couldn't hold that pace throughout, unfortunately. No, but seventh seventh overall on that course on this day with that knee pain can't be sniffed at. I would imagine Time should be happy with that. Home. Yeah, now you've got to drive back to Cheshire. No, yeah. Cheshire, Cheshire, yeah. yeah. Mm. You know, as with most triathletes, George will be probably highly critical of himself, but he shouldn't be. Amazing performance on a horrible course on a horrible day, so you can be nothing but proud of that, mate. We're all proud of you and Hopefully that's helped some people watching this about how it really feels to race middle distance. Well done, George. Well done, George. <laughs>